Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. Today I'm going to show you how I build a toddler bed that's shaped like a house, a playhouse toddler bed. Some people refer to it as a Montessori toddler bed because it keeps the mattress uh, very near to being right on the floor. I'm going to elevate the mattress on this one just a little bit, about two inches. That way in the event of uh, an overnight accident from the baby or you know a drink spill, something like that, liquid doesn't get trapped between the uh, mattress and the floor and ruin the floor. Thanks for watching and uh, let's get started. Now I have a cut list of all the materials that you'll need to build this bed in the video description below. So check that out. I'm not going to bore you with showing you how I measure and set up and cut 90 degree cuts because that's just boring. <laughs> um, I did use to build this, I've used dimensional lumber, um, two by sixes, two by fours, one by twos, and one by fours. All of these pieces are cut for what's really the front and the back of the bed. The What you would call the gable ends of the house are gonna be the ends, and then the front and the back are just gonna be open. Well, I'm gonna put some, some railing around the bed to keep the baby from rolling out. So these pieces are all cut to 52 inches because a standard toddler mattress in the US anyway, is 52 inches long by 28 inches wide. So we're gonna build it to fit toddler mattress or a crib mattress. The idea of a toddler bed is to be able to take the crib down, take the crib mattress, keep it, put it in the toddler bed, and then allow the child to transition from the crib to the toddler bed. So we're gonna build this so that a toddler, a crib mattress fits into it, 52 by 28. These are the, the front and the back pieces of two by six, they're 52 inches long. 52 inch uh, one by twos, they're gonna be attached to one edge of the two by sixes and they'll provide the ledge for the slats that are gonna support the mattress. Three two by fours at 52 inches, which are gonna be the supports that run from end to end at the, the peak and the bottom of the roof, kind of roof part of the bed. Then I've got 10 pieces of one by four by 28. Uh, these will become the slats that support the mattress inside the frame. And then the beginning of the uh, gable ends, um, these are the base pieces. They're 24 inches long, 2 by 4 Next, I'm going to cut the verticals um, for the gable ends and then the two pieces for each end for the peak. And then we'll be ready to start putting it together. So I want the tip on that mitered uh, part of these verticals to be at 44 inches. And it's not a real critical dimension, it's just gotta be close to that to make it proportionally look right. With my blade on a 90 degree cut on my miter saw, I've set my stop to 44 inches. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to an inside miter. That'll make the, the, the tip of the miter at 44. Um, that also works out well if you're using eight foot two by four because you can get two verticals out of each piece. I'll take just a real slight cut at the end as long as I don't have any splits or anything. If there are any splits, I'll cut those out. But if there are no splits on the end, I'll just take a real light cut, maybe a quarter inch, just to make sure that that end is square and then I'll start working off of that. set my stop up so I can go down to my stop, turn my miter, and then cut that. And I'm going to cut four just like that. So next I'm going to cut the four pieces that are going to make the peak of the roof on each end. One will be longer, one's going to be about 25 and an eighth and the other will be shorter because it'll be on the inside. It'll be 21 and 5 eighths. So the idea here is to look like this when we're done for the ends. That'll be the base. Our rails are gonna to attach to here and then we'll make the gable end with these two offset boards like I, like I just cut. And uh, I'm gonna use pocket holes to attach all this and uh, or fasten all this rather and glue around over all the corners just to keep the little ones from getting splinters. 
Okay, so this is the top of the post, and this is the um, this is the short gable end. So the way that joint's going to go together is like so. I want a pocket hole in this piece going into this end, and I want a pocket hole in this piece going into this side. And I'm using two inch screws. I've got the, the jig set up with my bit at seven eighths and with my with my jig set to um, an inch and a half. Then it doesn't matter which hole you use, just pick whichever hole you want. And I'm gonna take this one inch line that I scribed and I'm gonna line it up with the, the center of one of the holes. There's a line on a Craig jig anyway, they give you a line for the center of each hole and they, and they run the line down the back side of this piece. So you can line it up real easy. And then I'm gonna make sure that's vertical and then clamp it down. And then with my bit set, I'm gonna drill my hole. So I end up with a hole like that. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the, uh, with the top of the post. So then I end up with this. Now when I put them together, I've got one screw pulling it together this way and one screw pulling it together this way. Put that together. You just want to get it clamped down good and tight. Use a couple of two inch coarse thread screws since I'm going into pine. At this joint now, because I'm back to standard uh, jig settings. I'll use two and a half inch screws here. I'll put in the bottom section and then this end will be done also except for plugging the holes and sanding. So here's what one end of the Montessori bed is going to look like. I'm going to take the two two by sixes and the two uh, one by twos that I cut to 52 inches and I'm going to make the rails out of them. And the reason for a two by six is because a crib mattress is typically about five and a half inches deep. So if I put a one by two here, then that's going to put the top of the mattress just a little bit above the railing so that when the baby's getting in and out of the bed, he won't hit the top of the rail. I'm gonna glue and screw this one by two to the bottom edge of the two by six. I'll countersink some screws down through there. So what I do to line things like this up is I line up one edge on the end and then make sure that the edge is flush and clamp it. And then I come over and I do the other edge. And since lumber is never completely straight, then I check the middle. Well, the, on this particular piece, the one by two is bowed a little bit this way. So I got a little bit of an edge. So what I'll do is get it up flush and then I'll clamp it in the middle. And most of the time that'll pretty much take care of any problems that you have down the length of it. And if it doesn't, then you know you can do the same thing. You can take Take another clamp and push this up to where that's flush and then clamp it down here. And then you can go through and drill your holes. So I'm going to use um, number eight by inch and a half screws, uh, wood screws. I'm just going to use a number eight countersink bit. This is 52 inches long. I'm going to put a screw at five. I'm going to put one at 19. Then I'm going to put one at uh, 33. And I'm going to put 47. So next I'm going to do my uh, rough sanding so I can sand down my sand down my plugs and uh, some of my joints and the glue, you know, excess glue squeeze out, that kind of stuff. I'm going to try some of these uh, mesh discs. I was at a flea market the other day and there was a guy that had a whole bin of them of different grits. So I've not used these before, but they're hook and loop on one side. They're DeWalt discs. I'm going to try them, see how they work. But I'm going to go through and just kind of rough sand everything and then I'm going to round over all my edges and corners. Then I'll do my final sanding after, after the roundovers are done. 
I'm going to take all the uh, all the slats that I made for the mattress support, and I'm just going to give them a sanding. All I'm going to do basically is knock off all the sharp edges and the splinters. I'm going to round over all the edges with a 3 8 round over bit. I'm going to round, I've already rounded over the, uh, the beams that are going to go between the two end pieces. I'll round it off all four corners and then I'm going to round off the top, the rails. I've already done one side, I'm going to do the other side. Except the bottom edge, all I did on the bottom edge was I broke the corner with uh, sandpaper. It's a trick my dad taught me. Uh, when I'm using a router to do any kind of edge work, I make sure I get the end grain first. If anything's gonna chip out, it'll be right here. So if you do that first, the end grain first, and then you come and do this edge, then it'll take care of the chip. So now that I've gotten all the, all the members cut and rounded over and whatnot, I took several of my 60 inch bar clamps and basically put a clamp at each piece down here at this bottom rail that rail and the ridge beam and one at each of the top of the post beams so now i can go through and i can drill the ends of each piece for the takedown inserts to locate the takedown bolts and the inserts in the ends of each one and i made up like a little legend board it's just a little strip of wooden lath the length of this board is the same as the width of one of my two by four members. I want to put my fasteners one inch from each edge. So that's what I did with this is this is three and three eighths long and I've got a line all the way around one inch from each end. Th there might be a much better way to do this. This is just the way I came up with how to locate the screws in the same place on every end. Put it on the side of the of the stud. Make sure that it's flush with the top and I mark. I make a mark for each of my lines. And then I can take the other side, line them up, come around on this side and make a mark. Then same thing like so, make a mark here. Now I've got two marks that I know my whole center is going to be on. The center of these two by fours is, is the, the center of this beam is one inch in from this edge. And I set them that way on purpose so that now when I've got my one inch mark, all I have to do is flush up the top of my legend board across my two marks. And now my one inch line here tells me where the center of my hole needs to be. And I can do the same thing down here. Line up my two, line up on my two marks. And then right there is the center. So now, if I do that all on ends of all six of these, the ends will all be the same. So they'll all go together in the same, or in any position. So now I've got all of my holes located for the two by fours, the, the six ends that I'm gonna have to drill. I'm using two inch quarter by 20 knockdown bolts. The way these knockdown bolts work is on the receiving piece, you put in a metal insert. It's threaded for the quarter by 20 on the inside and then it's very coarse threaded on the outside. Now I epoxy them in. I'll show you that in a little bit. Because these are quarter by 20. Drill a quarter inch hole. I've taken a piece of masking tape and I've marked it about two and an eighth from the tip because two inch knockdown with the insert. I need two inches of depth but I want to give just a little bit of extra space at the end. And then we'll go back in the uh, in the receiving piece, the piece that gets the uh, insert, and we'll drill an 11 30 seconds hole in it because that's what the that's what the insert takes. And I'll leave a link in the description below on where to get these these bolts and these inserts. Now on the end where I've got, um, or at the bottom rather, where I've got the rail, once I kind of got it positioned, just took another clamp and I put it on the inside of this corner here, tightened it up so that I could move this one that I had just on the outside in the way, and then I just moved it up. So now I've got two clamps, neither one of them are directly over the end of this rail board, 
but that gives me access to the end on the outside so I can drill the holes for it. So I took uh, another piece of just scrap wood that's um, inch and a half wide and I cut it to match the width of my um, rail board, my two by six. And then I centered up two holes. Now I put my holes an inch and a half from each end because that'll allow me to miss the pocket hole screws that are um, that are in this this piece and uh, also get away from the edges so that ought to work out pretty well so I'm just gonna take this flush it up on the edge and then mark my holes so now I can just take this mark my hole on each end and then I'm ready to drill now I've disassembled the bed and I've got each of the sections of the the beams and the rails and the, of course my holes are drilled to a quarter inch because that's what I drilled for the through hole on the end pieces. Now these have to be drilled to match your inserts. My particular inserts they call for um, well they take a quarter by 20 bolt and they call they're 20 millimeters long and they take a drill size of nine millimeter. 20 millimeters is just just over uh, three quarters of an inch and nine millimeters is uh, about 11 30 seconds I've taken an 11 30 seconds bit from but from the shoulder of the end of it back I've marked uh, with a piece of tape three quarters of an inch so now I'm gonna redrill these holes with this larger bit so that the inserts will go in and then blow them out with a little compressed air we'll do both ends of, of every piece and we'll be ready to set the inserts I don't think you have to set these inserts using epoxy but I like to and I like to use um, a two-part a quick set this is a five-minute epoxy this happens to be Loctite These particular inserts that I'm using takes a six millimeter Allen wrench. So I just take, I put it on the end of my Allen wrench and I kind of roll it in the epoxy like so, get a little coating on it. And then I start it in the hole. Get my other one, do the same thing. I don't want, want to put too much epoxy in the hole because if I do, it's going to backfill and come in the end of the insert, and then I'm going to bottom out my bolt um, before it's seated, and then tighten it up until it's flush, or maybe maybe just a touch inset, but not much. And you can leave the excess and sand it off later, or wipe it off as you go, whichever you want to do. I'll wipe mine off. You just set the rest of these and you'll be finished setting all the inserts. The way I'm going to build the railing is attached to the outside of the toddler bed so that it can be taken off later if desired. So I'm going to build it in three separate sections, the two uh, sides and then the headboard. I'm going to attach it to the head of the bed with knockdown bolts so it can be removed or not. For the side railings, I've cut two pieces of 2x4 at 18 inches long, two for each side. Then I've got the blocks that'll go between like so, and uh, I cut them at eight and a quarter. Of course, you know, like the top will set here. And then in the middle, I'm gonna use uh, five eighths hardwood dowel rods for the spindles. And I'm gonna space the spindles uh, about three and three quarters apart, uh, which is a safe distance for children. I'll round over all the edges, the inside and the outside on both sides. And then for the headboard portion, I've cut two two by fours at 30 and a half, and then also blocks, two blocks at eight and a quarter, and then again more dowel rods. So I'm going to bore my holes in all of these two bys at one inch deep, uh, five eighths diameter. I'll use a Forstner bit so I'll get a nice flat bottom and a nice round hole. I've cut all these dowels to uh, 10 and a quarter. And I'll put all these dimensions in the description. Just in case you're not exactly centered on something like this, 
is just mark the side facing you on every bit that you drill and then make sure that all of the same sides are facing up when you go to screw it together just in case you're slightly off on your center measure. So I've got all my top and bottom pieces for the rails drilled. I've got the vertical pieces all pocket hole drilled so I can put them together. The way I'm going to put these railings together is I'm not going to glue the the little balusters, the spindles in. I think you could. I guess there's probably two schools of thought on spindles and balusters to glue them or not to glue them. So if you've got an opinion on that, leave a comment in the comment section. I'd like to hear it. These are oak, this is pine. So because they're two different types of wood, I'm gonna not glue them and it's a pretty tight fit anyway, so I think they'll be fun. I'm gonna go ahead and set these take a dead blow hammer you could use a little wooden mallet whatever kind of set them in do the same thing with the top piece I marked a line where my blocks end so I'm going to glue this area on both the top and the bottom piece that glue up, slide these in here, get them positioned Pretty close. And just to make sure that I've got the spindles pretty well set, I'm going to put a little bit of clamp pressure on each end before I screw them. I've centered up on this corner, on each corner, a place for the knockdown bolts that are going to hold the headboard on, or the head railing on. And so I'm going to go back to my quarter inch bit, then I'll re-drill the hole into the end piece at the 11.30 seconds for the insert. So then we'll put the inserts in here, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, side rails. Basically, I'm going to put the bed back together. I'll clamp the side rails on to uh, to where they belong and I'll drill those and put in inserts for them and it'll be all done. For the slats to support the mattress, you can just use these as is. You don't have to do anything special to them. I'm going to go an extra step with the slats though. I'm going to space them out and then I'm going to attach two rows of nylon webbing and uh, put some dowels in the, the support pieces, the one by twos at the, at the head and the foot of the bed so that it holds the slats in place. And these are three and seven sixteenths wide. So that leaves me um, like 17 and a half inches of space. So I cut a couple of little spacer blocks at uh, one and 15 sixteenths. So what I can do is I can just use these to space each board because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay all these out so then you just got to kind of be careful as you uh, put them in place to not bump the last board you did and if I've done this right we'll see in a minute <laughs> if I've done this right then yeah, it should space out just about right So I just bought a, uh, a roll, one inch nylon webbing. I'm gonna run two strips of that down these slats and staple it on to be able to just roll them up and instead of having to keep up with 10 loose boards. What I'd recommend doing is the factory end will come singed so it doesn't unravel. I would measure this out uh, about 51 inches or so, give yourself about a half inch on each end and then uh, cut it and singe the end with a uh, lighter or something or a torch.
I've taken a piece of uh, eighth inch dowel rod and I've just cut four three quarter inch long pieces off and I've taken my, my drill bit, my eighth inch drill bit, I've set my tape back three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch from the tip. So basically half the length of these. Because I'm going to drill a hole um, at every corner on the end slat. So four holes and I'm going to set those eighth inch dowels right here in this support board, this one by two. So that it basically kind of snaps in the each end slat. And then I'm just going to glue those dowels in.